Hey everybody, Chris Mohan here. Welcome another road reflection. This is not going to be a pretty road reflection. I think you can probably tell that from the uh, from the typo, title 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 of of uh, uh, this video. This is not going to be a, a fun, happy one. I don't know if any of these have been fun and happy. There's been some good news that I've <laughs> shared. Uh, throughout this, so um, yeah, I want to I want to jump right in because I don't know how long this is going to end up being. I might end up ranting uh, quite a bit. I might not rant a whole lot at all, and actually be able to collect my thoughts properly. Uh, who knows? But this is a, an ongoing issue. Uh, I've talked a lot about the issue of police brutality. Black Lives Matter, protest activism, um, you know, the uh, defund the police movement. Done a lot of videos on this channel about this. Uh, Put out, you know, did a did a whole the Citizens Revolution show specifically about uh, what some of these terms mean, why they are in uh, in our cultural zeitgeist. Why do we need to? Focus on community development, defunding the police. Why do we need to uh, think about, you know, actually putting murderous cops in prison, completely re- changing the structure of uh, structure and definition of policing? Period. Uh, there, there is historical context for this. There is. Uh, but there's current events context for this. You know, there's a lot of... And, and I think right now uh, we are seeing uh, all of these arguments play out in real time. Um, with the case of uh, Breonna Taylor in Louisville. And I've talked a bunch about Breonna Taylor as well as George Floyd. As well as various other uh, pol- police murders. Um uh, by, by which I mean murders which the police are responsible for, where, where they are the murderers themselves and <clears throat> the media makes it sound like they're not. And you hear words like fucking law and order. Well, here's some, here's some law and order for you. This is, this is what they mean when they say law and order. Right. What they mean is what they mean by law and order is uh, murderous cops get either bullshit sentences or when they do get the sentence that they actually are supposed to get, they have a fucking D.A. that wants to get them out of prison that will throw some uh, nonsense charge at the victim who has been murdered or brutalized by these cops and and blame it on them instead so that they get a reduced sentence. So today we we got the uh, six months we waited for this six months for 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 something like this to actually fucking come through six fucking months the city of Louisville the the the, the people in that city the, they've been protesting they've been leading demonstrations they've been fucking getting uh, c- c- attacked with chemical weapons by the police rubber bulleted. Leading the charge six months after Breonna Taylor's brutal murder, after a no knock warrant, cops came in, guns a blazing, because, you know, policing isn't policing, it's fucking Rambo. There they went, <clears throat> murdered her, and here's the thing. She's an EMT. And and there's nothing that corporate media can say to justify any of this crap. And they weren't able to. So JJ circled the drain with, with Breonna Taylor. But people in Louisville fucking didn't. People on the streets didn't. Comedians like myself didn't. And they stayed out on the streets and these and these breadcrumbs were thrown at us. 
as they usually do. They throw these breadcrumbs and they go, isn't this enough? Isn't it enough that we fired the one guy, but then a bunch of the other ones went on paid vacations? Isn't that enough? Yeah, well, I guess Jeffrey Dahmer should get on a sent on a paid vacation too, right? Because he was a murderer too. So we were waiting for this. We were waiting for the grand jury to charge these officers. <clears throat> now, the, the, the difference here is this took six months to happen. And, and you know, with, with the George Floyd case... Uh, again, that was sort of the the the, the powder keg, um, you know, because because in a, in a short period of time, month after month, you just kept seeing more of these high profile uh, uh, murders of black people in America, and the the United States justice system doing fuck all about it, because the United States justice system does fuck all about. Uh, murders of black people unless they're rich unless they're rich or they get caught and public sentiment changes they can't spin their bullshit law and order uh, you know their 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 bullshit uh, we're, we're protecting everybody oh your life is in danger all the time if if we don't have uh, if we don't have militarized police if we don't let the cops do no-knock warrants, if we don't let the cops do this, that, and the third, then, then your life is going to be in danger. Oh, no. You know, we saw Brianna, we saw Maude Aubrey, we saw George Floyd, Jacob Blake, Antoine Rose. Mike Brown, Eric Garner, I mean, Sandra Bland, the list just keeps fucking going. Now, with, again, I, I guess, I'm sorry, I trailed off there because I got mad, but, you know, the George Floyd protests, I mean, that kind of reignited the movement a little bit more. And... So they moved faster on that shit. You know, uh, Minneapolis t- t- was pushing for defunding the police. Jacob Fry basically came out and said, nah, I'm not going to do that shit. Uh, because I'm sure the cops helped get him elected, right? Um, then they fired Chauvin pretty quickly. Within maybe a day or two, they fired him. And, uh, and then with, I mean, within the week, Jacob Fry was doing the moderate centrist thing of like, well, the cops are good. They're good people. They're, you know, a couple of rotten eggs. That's all it is. It's just one or two rotten apples. We don't need to defund the police. Uh, we'll, we'll just get rid of these people in the, uh, in the department and everything will be fine because that's all it is. And, and then it was like, nope. So then, because people kept protesting in the streets, they kept pushing for this stuff, uh, you got to see Chauvin get charged with second, third degree murder and manslaughter um, and possibly get a 15 to 20 year sentence. Uh, and then the other officers that were around him got, a, got accessory charges, uh, which are probably lighter sentences. And everybody's like, yeah, that's what should happen. You should get a fucking murder charge because you murdered somebody. The reason why it wasn't first degree murder was because uh, proving uh, pr- uh, that, that it was planned is is difficult to do a, in, in circumstances like this. And uh, again, they can they can u- they can hide behind the shield. They can hide behind the thin blue line. Uh, and, you know, so and that and that you know, happened relatively quickly. I think by the end of June, we were looking at, uh, these charges for, for someone like Derek Chauvin, who absolutely deserves those charges because that's exactly what the fuck he did. He fucking murdered a guy. The police aren't above the law that they represent. This isn't a fucking Steven Seagal movie. 
That's not even a good Steven Seagal movie. So now we finally got to the point where Breonna Taylor's murderers. There was an FBI investigation. Uh, I believe the uh, commissioner of the police department. I, I think that's that's the right term that I'm looking for. Commissioner stepped down because I mean, what are you what are you gonna fucking do, man? Like your officer straight up murdered an EMT because they thought her ex-boyfriend who was a drug dealer was at her apartment because that was one of the listed addresses and instead of like warning her hey this guy might be sending shit to your house you fucking did a no knock you didn't do an investigation and you ended up killing this woman That's not policing. That's not investigation. That's not being a detective. That's just you murdering somebody in cold blood. So then six months later, we get this. We get this today, right? One cop out of the three that they charge. One cop out of the three. Brett Hankinson. Sergeant Brett Hankinson. uh, Was charged with three accounts of wanton endangerment. In the first degree, uh, which has a maximum uh, of five years in prison. And he got bail. He got bail of $15,000, guys. $15,000 bail. Oh, man. He fucking murders somebody. He gets a, a, a bullshit, bullshit charge. Wanton endangerment. He murdered somebody. What are you talking of wanton endangerment? He fucking murdered somebody. He murdered a black woman. He murdered Breonna Taylor. He was one of the police officers. That, there were multiple of them that fired shots at her. So what is wanton endangerment? Why does he have a fifteen thousand dollar bail? Why can't he get Why can't he get bailed out of jail? Uh, wanton endangerment basically means putting someone's life in peril or danger. That's all cops all the time, basically. Anybody that has a fucking superiority complex and you give them a gun and a badge and and then you give them a bunch of Laws where uh, they, they, you, they, you, you tell them that the, the public, you're at war with the public at all times. That's wanton endangerment all the time from every police officer all the time. Charge all of the police officers with that. And they should start there. Let's start there. Every cop out there wanting endangerment. So anything you do, you're under wanton endangerment. If it goes headwire, we start with that and we move up. So you start with a five-year maximum sentence. If the system actually worked the way that it was fucking supposed to work... No, her life her life was in danger. Her life ended. That's not putting her life in danger. That means putting her life in danger makes it sound like, oh shit, something crazy happened and she she made it out alive, but you know, boy, she could have lost her life. No, she she Brianna Taylor is no longer living because of Sergeant Brett Hankinson and the other two officers who fucking riddled her house, riddled her apartment with bullets. Wanton endangerment. Oh, but there's three accounts of it. 
Who gives a shit? You could put 28 accounts of it. I don't give a fuck. He murdered her. Every cop should get wanton endangerment. Should have a wanton endangerment charge. Every single cop should have one. Look at how they treat protesters. They're, I mean, they're protesting a little bit right now. I was watching one right before I left to uh, get, get, get in my car here to sit in unending traffic for, the, you know, uh, I, w- I was watching. They were, uh, I was watching a live stream of a gentleman and they're, you know, surrounding protesters. They're, they're kettling them in. They're kettling them in, firing rubber bullets at them. And all, all they were doing was peacefully marching. That's it. But they kettled them. They started uh, firing off uh, fucking tear gas, chemical weapons uh, that is uh, not approved by the Geneva Conventions. We're gassing our own people because the people have come out and said that we're not going to deal with cops that murder people. And if they're not going to get a murder charge, then we're going to take to the streets to continue demanding for justice. That's the only reason why the, this grand jury trial even fucking happened. Not because the courts think that it's the right thing to do. When the fuck have the courts ever thought that anything is the right thing to do? No, the courts did it because public sentiment has flipped. And if they don't stay in line with public sentiment, then they don't have any kind of point of control. That means that we don't have any faith in the courts, which means that the public at large will no longer listen to the laws made up by the courts. They're fucking kettling them. They're throwing tear gas at them. Rubber bullets. I was watching. I was watching it happen. I mean, honestly, what the fuck did they expect? What do they expect? Six months. Six months to, 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 to slap this guy on the wrist for murdering somebody. What kind of message does that send people? That if you wear a fucking blue uniform that says protect and serve, and you come from a history of fucking uh, slave hunters, that when you kill black people, it's totally cool. That's the message you send people. You want to know why the movement's called Black Lives Matter? Because right now, we have a justice system that has 100% deemed it that black lives don't matter. Not just that, there is a Supreme Court uh, ruling that says that. After the Civil War, there was, a, there was a justice that said, oh, by the way, if a white person kills a black person, it's fine. You want to know why it's called Black Lives Matter? That's why. Because we have a system in place that says they don't. This is a slap on the wrist at best. And then on top of that, too, uh, I I just read this today, too, is, uh, first of all, all three of these officers should be charged with murder, the same as Derek Chauvin. So they should have gotten second, third, and manslaughter. That's what they should have gotten, for sure, 100%. No no questions asked. Who the fuck is on this grand jury? Who is on this grand jury? And how much money did the police union give them? How is it that they're not charged with murder? They actually said the grand jury was was basically making sure that they wouldn't get charged with murder. So the way they presented and adjudicated the case was that they were trying to make sure that they wouldn't get charged with murder or homicide.
So Chauvin got charged, right? Second, third, manslaughter. Second and third degree murder with manslaughter. First of all, that's okay. That's what the Louisville cops should all get. All of them that were involved in the shooting. And then the rest of the fucking Louisville Metro Police Department should get wanton destruction of the first degree charged on them. Especially if you're going to fucking kettle and use chemical weapons on peaceful protesters and activists. So I saw this today too, right? Chauvin's got a 15 to 20 year sentence coming up. But that has not been determined because the district attorney, that, or rather the defense attorney, sorry, the defense attorney uh, to Chauvin said, well, there were drugs involved in Mr. Floyd's case. They tested for drugs, so there might have been drugs involved. Uh, so that puts the officer's life in danger, and you know he was acting out of duress, and he was also doing his job. His job, uh, you know, he was trained to defend himself in a particular way, and that's what he did. He defended himself in a particular way. Uh, so he was just doing his job. He was doing his duty. He was following the orders that was laid out for him. You know, just like the Nazis. You know how the Nazis were just following orders. Yeah. If the cops want to get, if the cops want to uh, stop being compared to Nazis, maybe they should stop fucking using Nazi defenses. Also, watch the video. Watch the video because in the video, it shows that George Floyd wasn't resisting arrest, wasn't getting aggressive, wasn't trying to fight Derek Chauvin or any of the other officers. He was panicking. He was panicking because there is a very clear pattern of police officers murdering people of color in this country and getting away with it. Here's the example right here and now. Here's the example right here and now with Breonna Taylor. It's astounding to me that this... uh, uh, Brett Haskins guy, Sergeant Brett Haskins, hasn't gotten a charge of murder. Especially when in June they came out and said that he has an extreme indifference to the value of human life. Which, translation, fucking sociopath. That's what that means. That this guy is a sociopath. Cops should take the fucking sociopath test and the psychopath test before they fucking get into the academy he has an extreme indifference for the value of human life yeah that guy's a sociopath why are we letting sociopaths be in law enforcement oh is it because uh, lesser sociopaths are protecting higher sociopaths is it because working class sociopaths are protecting rich sociopaths and that's what the cops are now By no means is somebody with like that's not a sociopath is gonna understand why they need to protect a sociopath, protect stuff instead of fucking people. Fucking wanton endangerment. It's a nothing charge. called him a sociopath and you gave him a nothing charge the FBI was opening up an investigation for this which again just I mean it just goes to show right like the FBI has has never really cared about black America considering half the time the fucking FBI is has been uh, uh, freaking out looking for the black messiah that's why they uh you know, why, that's why COINTELPRO was created, and uh, that's why they were, were doing all these fucking, you know, they were, like, calling Martin Luther King Jr., they were keeping tabs on the Panthers and Black uh, uh, Malcolm X, and... So, 
even the FBI opening up the investigation were like, well, yeah, you guys racistly killed this black lady. And now you want immunity from murder. Sure. Maybe the FBI is the one that suggested this. The FBI was just like, hey, listen, it's just a black person. Supreme Court said that black people dying by white hands don't count. Uh, just like anal. Anal doesn't count if you do it first. You guys know that rule, right? It's the same thing. So the FBI thinks that the grand jury shouldn't, you know, put a homicide charge on these cops. Lunatics. I mentioned breadcrumbs uh, a while back, right? So one of the breadcrumbs that they threw out there for this is uh, they gave $12 million to... Uh, the Taylor family, I believe. I, I, I believe that's the, the, the way that it worked. Which is like, okay, great. Like, is this hush money or is this, like, what is this? Was the $12 million to be like, here's money, please tell people to go home. Get people off of the streets. It, I mean, it didn't get people off the streets. I'm pretty sure that the uh, the Taylor family was, like, pushing for people to be on the streets and protest the way that they should be, that they want to protest. Making sure that people are safe. And then they deemed no-knock warrants illegal, which should be a federal law, just... Just like it should be a federal law that you shouldn't put your fucking knee on somebody's neck. Maybe don't do that. Human decency should not have to be legislated. But here we are. Not just that, the Louisville Metro Police uh, Department, the, the, the ones that, uh, you know, killed Breonna Taylor. I'm going to keep saying that till it fucking sinks in. They weren't put, they didn't put their body cams on. So they had to put that into it. That you have to turn on your body cams before you go into an operation like that. What? None of this rings suspicious is like they didn't turn on their body cams. They had a no-knock warrant. They went in and they fucking went guns a-blazing like it was a Rambo movie. Like they were Steven Seagal bringing his career back from the grave. And they were like, this black lady is gonna do it! And then they just fucking sprayed a bunch of bullets. None of that reads as, as red flags to be like, oh, this seems this seems like these guys knew what they were doing was wrong, but they just went ahead and did it anyway. Because they knew a black lady was in there. And they don't they don't they they have a, a, a extreme indifference for the value of human life. They're fucking sociopaths. And maybe sociopaths shouldn't be given a, a free range to shoot whoever the fuck they want. Shouldn't be given just the highest degree of military weapons. And qualified immunity. <laughs> to legislate fucking no-knock warrants are illegal. Yeah, no shit. And legislate that, that uh, p- p- putting your knee on somebody's neck is illegal. Yeah, no shit. What do you think happens in those cases? Turn on your body camera so we have accountability. Yeah, no shit. Giving us the yeah, no shit arguments is not what we're asking for. Great. You have body cam. I mean, you have body cam footage of cop after cop murdering innocent black people and they're getting paid vacations lesser and lesser sentences. 
And now Derek Chauvin, who got the fucking sentence that he should have fucking gotten, is about to is they're they're trying to get him off. Because drugs? Question mark? No. Yeah, there's no drugs in his system. Pre-existing heart condition? Question mark? Oh, does a pre-existing heart condition include a 200 some odd man on your neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds? Does that happen? I know. I know people that have heart conditions, and uh, you know, I've I've never seen uh, a two hundred some odd pound police officer just land on their neck. So now, Louisville has a curfew in effect uh, from nine p.m. to six thirty a.m. And like I mentioned, they're protesting and cops are kettling people. And uh, I, I mean, they're going to try to arrest people. I, I believe that's one of the things that I heard in this video. I could I could be mistaken because it, it just, you know, sometimes live videos are like unless you're combing through it to try to find details when you're just kind of watching them live. Like you're like, oh, holy shit. What was that? But I, I, I thought I heard somebody you know, when, when the gentleman was passing them saying that, um, that this new commissioner was basically like, arrest anybody that's involved in the protest. Which, yeah, again, if you want, if you want to, if you want people to stop comparing you to, uh, authoritarian dictators, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps you should stop fucking acting like one. It's not that hard. I don't want to be called Dick Cheney. So, you know, I just don't act like Dick Cheney. I've never shot a man in the face. I've never started an illegal war. I'm not friends with George W. Bush. I'm not auditioning to play the penguin in a live action Batman film. I don't do any of those things. And that way, like, no one can call me Dick Cheney because I don't want to be Dick Cheney. These cops don't want to be called fascist authoritarians, and yet they go, uh, anybody that's protesting a murder by, of, you know, by, by, by the hands of a cop, and they get mad because our sentencing is bullshit. Anybody protesting that, uh, their constitutional right, go ahead and arrest. Go ahead and arrest people exercising their constitutional right. But don't call us fascists. We're not fascists. We're doing our jobs. Oh, no, no, no. I think you're fascist. And what happens to cops? Let's say there's, a, there, there, there's one police officer in the Louisville Metro Police Department that is led, looks at this and goes, you know, I, I really think um, what these three cops did were terrible. And they go... You know, I, I really don't think we should be doing this. I, I think we should put our um, our right gear down and we should join the protesters in solidarity to show them that, you know, we, we as the police department are here to protect and serve them. What happens to that cop? Well, they probably get fired uh, or they get targeted. Or they remain in the system and, you know, they're, you know, attacked and tortured or their family gets threatened so even if you if, if there is a cop that wants to do you know the the right thing they're gonna get rooted out of the system honestly the only way the, the policing is gonna work is if it's smaller and more community based People know you in the community. You know the cops in the community. The cops live in the community, so they know how to actually protect and serve it properly. Putting a curfew in effect. By the way, they put that curfew in effect long before the, the indictment came out. Long before the charges were released. They said that they're going to put a 9 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. curfew, which to me is that's just an admission of guilt that you knew 
you knew what you what, what, what you were doing was not enough. What you were doing was wrong. This this charge is uh, barely a charge for for the crime that was committed by these police officers. You you absolutely knew that, and you didn't do anything about it. And you and you now are fearing the wrath of the public, that's going to sit there and be like, yeah. Yeah, this is bullshit. And so you use your authoritarian power to put this fucking curfew in effect. Because people are mad. And if you're a person of America in color, or fuck, ugh. I'm so upset I can't even fucking form the sentences. If you're a person of color in America, you can't show emotion. You can't show that you're upset. You have to you have to practice uh, a a extreme level of stoicism. Just like unaffected white people do. Just like the affluent liberal white community does. But if you show emotion, if you show how fucking angry you really are, how upset something is, oh, scary, that's scary. Can't deal with that. Oh, these these protesters are too emotional. Why can't they quietly sit at home and go, boy, that's a shame. Just like the rest of the affluent white liberal community. Or why can't they stay at home and go, well, you know, that's the way the law works, like the fucking affluent white conservative community. Don't go out there and fight for your rights, or yell, or show that you're actually upset, or that you're a person with feelings. Don't do that. That's going to fuck everything up. That's going to dilute the message. If you want black lives to matter, you have to stay unemotional about it. Stay neutral about this very clear stance that you're taking. No, get angry. And the city of Louisville is angry. The city of Minnesota is, uh, Minneapolis is angry. Wisconsin is angry. The whole fucking country is angry right now. I I mean I've I've talked about the benefits of stoicism. I think there is benefits of stoicism and not being reactionary about a lot of things, right? But here's the thing. I think a reasonable response to a bullshit fucking uh, indictment, bullshit fucking charge to murder is protesting, is activism, is marching on the streets, is saying something about it, is doing something about it, is using your voice, being, you know, expressing yourself. That is an aspect of stoicism. They didn't go out there and immediately set fire to a police department. That's what the law and order people want you to believe. By the way, this is also part of the law and order. And both of the fucking presidential candidates talk about law and order. Okay, and this is what they mean by law and order. Breadcrumbs at best, friends. Breadcrumbs at best. Both of them do. So if, if this is one of those flagship issues for you, then you don't have a horse in the race in November. I'm sorry to say it. But this curfew is that. It's just an admission of guilt. And we're allowed to be angry about it. You're allowed to feel ways 
But from what I'm seeing, it's a reasonable response. Marches, protests, activism. You know who isn't reacting to this very well? The fucking police. Rubber bullets and chemical warfare towards peaceful protesters. Been doing it all summer. Been doing it since the start of time. How about you fucking tell the cops to, to, to be less reactive and emotional? Look at someone like Philando Castile. Dude said he, he, had, he was a registered gun owner and he needs to reach over to grab his, uh, his information. And the cop freaked out, pulled out his gun, shot him in the chest. Tell that guy to be less reactive and emotional. But they get that pass. Because they're wearing the shield and the badge. This is not law and order, by the way. This is the system's definition of law and order, but it's, it's, not, it's not really law and order. We have to hold these people accountable. The reason why any of this stuff is even happening to the degree that it's even happening, to, to this light degree, you know, this breadcrumbs that they're throwing us, uh, is because people are on the streets, is because there are, are people talking about it constantly. We, we on the ground floor are changing the, the perception. We, we are changing the way... Um, we're changing our faith in the justice system. And basically saying, uh, if the justice system doesn't listen to us and, and work for us and work with us, then we'll find something different. And if the way we're going to have to find something different is by burning it to the ground and rebuilding it, you know, with, with something better, then that's the way we're going to do it. Now, you could listen to the peaceful protesters. You could listen to the organizers. You could listen to the labor leaders. And you could say, you guys have valid points. Let's figure out how to make this shit work. Minneapolis did that to some respect. Louisville has not. Um... Uh, Wisconsin is not. It's just the reality of it. They don't want to work with the people. They're against the people. And then when you go and protest and say that the way things are working are unjust, this is not how, you know, things are supposed to be. Our lives do matter. Call you Antifa and terrorists and, you know, against the First Amendment. Oh, this is... Why can't you protest the way that I, I want you to protest? Controlled protests. Right? Joe Biden's big... Why are you looting? It's not part of the first amendment. Sorry, I made him sound like Mitch McConnell. But really, what's the difference? Uh, I guess Mitch McConnell is stronger than uh, Joe Biden. <laughs> But, I mean, this is bullshit. It's just bullshit. Really, the big question that I think we need to ask in this situation that we're all in is, uh, you know, how can we trust these agents of a system that completely disregards heinous crimes, murdering somebody? How could we how can we ever trust this system again?
you know, what do we do going forward? I don't know if I particularly... I don't, I, don't, I don't have an answer for that question. There's probably some theories, some thoughts. We've tried to reform this system from within, but, you know, it doesn't work. What it does is it takes these reformers and absorbs them into the system and then co-ops their message and then does what it, whatever it wants to do with it anyway. But it says those nice things. While it does horrible things. And you're never allowed to chastise the system or anything like that. Rest assured when people when, when the candidates talk about law and order, they're talking about this. Okay? They're talking about uh giving you breadcrumbs in terms of these sort of indictments. They're, they're talking about not actually holding people, holding the system accountable for, for the wrongdoings that it's doing. That's what law and order really means. It's a fun fact. If you, if you really want law and order, if you want people to follow the rules that are set in place for everybody to follow... And the judicial system and the law enforcement departments are put into place to ensure that those laws are actually being followed and uphold them in some way. Uh, How come none of the fucking Wall Street bankers are in prison for causing the crashes of, I don't know, 1907, 1914, 1929, 1930s, the 70s, 08, 02, 2020? Where, where are the bankers in prison for that stuff? Because, because they're not. They're not in prison. They're fucking free and doing whatever they want to do. Just like these fucking cops are. These cops are free to do whatever they want to do. He has a bail for $15,000 for murdering somebody. You know what the the, the department, uh, the Louisville Police Department's budget is? It's like six hundred million dollars. Drop in the bucket. If they wanted to get that dude out, they drop in the bucket. They can't. No problem. No big deal. This is why people are on the streets. This is why the marches won't stop. This is why the activism will continue. This is why I'll keep speaking out again about this stuff. This is why I'll sit there and point out every single time either one of these fucking candidates, whether they're Democrat or Republican, have supported a system like this. Because we are the ones that are going to keep the system accountable. And you don't transform a system like this from within. You attack it from the outside and you change it and make it something completely different. And that's what we need to do. To all the people in Louisville, I hope you guys are staying safe. Uh, I'm going to keep, you know, watching uh, all the videos and um, things of that sort. And I hope, you know, everybody... Yeah, just stay safe out there. Uh, And know that, you know, you, you have... Friends across the country, uh, brothers and sisters that stand with you, and that you're you are seen, you are heard. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Sorry if it, if this got too uh, too 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 ranty and ragey, but <coughs> had to get that all out there. Um, <laughs> you guys know what to do. Uh, like, share, subscribe. This is probably going to get censored. Talking about some shit that corporate oligarchies don't want to want out there. So things like YouTube and Facebook are going to do it. So the easiest and best place to get it is at Rockfin. Rockfin.com slash Krishmohanhaha. Uh, go to my website, Krishmohanhaha.com. Doing shows on Friday nights, 9 p.m. Virtually from the River's Edge studio. So you can grab your tickets for that if you would like to. If you need free tickets, I've got those available as well. But stay safe. See you soon.